whose camera's on that you can see the presentation? Excellent. Thank you. Terrific. All right, let's get started. We are talking tonight about a return to school through our hybrid model, a model that we planned to begin the school year with and had to change uh, due to the situation in our schools and in our in our community as well. So we are very excited to be to be able to now try it again. Oh, I think there was someone who wanted to get in. Yes, the, to, to try it again for the first time. Um, we are very also thrilled to have virtual learning under our belts because that has been a lift itself and it's been very successful from our perspective, as difficult as it's been. You have been incredibly supportive of our teachers and of your students so that it's made our virtual learning experience possible. And we feel ready to take this next step to uh, the hybrid model. What does hybrid learning mean? Hybrid learning combines face-to-face -face and online teaching into one cohesive experience. So we have students in front of us, approximately half of the students in each class, while others students are working online at home. Actually, that statistic has been updated today. Dr. Mass shared with us in her letter that 25% of our district elected to stay virtual at this time. So when half of the class uh, is hybrid coming to school, that's actually half of the 75% because just about every school had similar statistics that way. The cohorts were divided initially based on students' last names and that was for the entire district. So we have a person in charge of data in the district who exported all of it put everybody, um, you know, the first half of the students in the A cohort, the second half of the students in the B cohort, sorry, and, and then shared those decisions with the administrators so that we could start to look at siblings, we could start to look at any areas where there were lopsided classes in terms of numbers, and we started to do some shifting into, in terms of who was in which cohort. There have been some adjustments that needed to be made with particular students in an effort to balance our number of students in each cohort. The cohort schedule. You got a lot of information this week about our cohort schedule, and hopefully you are able to find the cohort schedule easily on, um, on our website. It's the, the large letter that went out this week from me is located on the main page of the McGinn website, so you can, you can find it there. There are two cohorts. There is the blue group or the A group who will attend in person on Mondays and Tuesdays and every other Wednesday. And our students who are in the red group or the B group who will attend in person on Thursdays and Fridays and every other Wednesdays. Grades K through four, all of us will have the same schedule in terms of the day. It will, we, will, we are maintaining the schedule. This is why it was designed this way. To, that we have done in virtual learning. So all students will start school at 8.35 or 8.40 to 12.40. It's a four hour block, but if you wanna make it for announcements, you'll come in by 8.35, come on by 8.35. And students who are coming to school would be able to start coming at 8.25. So 8.25 to 8.35 is entrance into the building and um, 8.40 to 12.40 for all students is our AM session. We are continuing also with our virtual PM session from two to three o'clock, which as you know from your classroom teachers, takes on many different forms depending upon whether there are special activities, whether there are independent activities, small groups, or whole class lessons taking place at that time. What safety measures have we put in place to make sure that this transition is a safe one? Here are some of them. The most important one is that we have staff and student daily symptom screening. We have there, This is going to be mentioned a few times in the presentation because more information has come out this week. Uh, we now have the daily symptom screening in PowerSchool for all of our students. This must be completed before students come into the building in the morning. And we ask that it's done by 7.30 in the morning. You will get reminders. If you do not complete it, you will get text reminders and uh, it needs to be completed before you get to the campus. So that's, that's really significant. All of our staff do the same thing. They are also followed up uh, on by our staff if, um, if they aren't completed in time. So that is really important. 
We also uh, are managing six feet social distancing whenever possible throughout the building in our classrooms. And, um, and, and that's mostly where our students will be because we are doing our best to maintain sections of the building for certain groups of students. In most cases, it's a grade level. In some cases, there might be a class or two that are from a different grade level. We are also all wearing masks throughout the day, all st staff and all students. This is going to be a transition next week and we really look forward to your patience in, in, in us doing that. So anybody who's in the B cohort or who is a virtual learner, the first few days for the A cohort is going to be us managing, practicing or wearing our masks throughout the day, taking breaks as needed because we don't want, we want to build up uh, the mass tolerance and not not uh, make anybody uncomfortable during the school day. And then we will also have that same practice for our B cohorts at the end of the week. We will also have consistent and regular hand height, uh, washing going on throughout the throughout the school day. Teachers will be scheduling that into their classes. So this is another thing. They will be rotating students to do it. We won't have people going all um, at one time. Um, and this is true also for our bathrooms. If you take a look at the picture, we have clear signage around the building about uh, near our bathrooms too and, and in other places about mask wearing. Um, students are just going to go into the bathrooms one at a time and we will have staff to support that. We also have these signs the kids will know if there's somebody in there, they step on one of the, uh, the signs that are there. Here's a little bit more information about hybrid instruction. Now, we are also getting an understanding of what hybrid instruction looks like. We have the benefit of having learned some things from other districts that have been working on hybrid instruction. We are going to use the technology we have in the most efficient means possible to equitably teach our virtual learners and learners who are present. It won't always look the same, but it will be rich learning in both situations. So there's a little picture up there that's not a great picture, but you can see one of our overhead projectors that we have in every classroom and every teaching space. And we also have screens. We also have Elmos, which are document cameras that our teachers have used extensively in virtual learning, and they've really become pros at using it. We are also learning, it's going to take some time, but as we transition to the hybrid model, how to use that technology to engage both the students at home and the students at school in seeing one another. And that's going to be possible. The district has ordered, uh, doc, uh, not document cameras, they've ordered um, web cameras for every single teaching space that have enhanced um, microphones as well. So one thing that we're very, we're very interested in is that our learners at home can hear what our learners at school are saying. Our learners at school are, are, def are going to be able to hear through um, the teacher's computer, and which can, be, uh, which can be projected to, but we want to make sure that the experience at home is also very positive for, and clear for our students. Sorry. <laughs> My three-finger swipe is a little bit clumsy sometimes. There we go. Hybrid instruction will present its challenges for teachers to balance the instruction for both groups of students. We are very sensitive to the fact that there are times when the teacher is not, not going to be sure where we need to be in, the, in order to, uh, to monitor the students in both places. So that's going to take practice. I know they'll get it. They got it for virtual learning and they've done an amazing job. And we do have people working together to try to uh, provide as much uh, support as possible, but it's going to be a challenge and we're, we're going to uh, give them our, our best patience to, to make sure that they can get it the, way that it the way that they want it to. There will be times that students are engaged in synchronous learning, which is where it happens at the same time, which is what you're seeing right now, where teachers are teaching the class, the students are working on activities at the same time, um, and then they, then they share them with their teachers at the same time. They're all, all engaged with that. But there is some asynchronous learning, even now. That is usually when it doesn't happen at the same time, but students, students currently in our virtual model are sometimes working on one assignment at home while teachers may be working with a small group. So they're not exactly doing the same thing, but they are still on the meet at the same time synchronously. And that may, there may be some times when there's some asynchronous learning where some students are, are working on activities at a different time. And 
Here we go. I just want to make sure I can let everybody in that is interested in being in. Okay. As mentioned, students will uh, teachers will use technology to allow students at home to be engaged in the Google Meet while addressing the needs of students who are in person. So sometimes, sometimes the students at home will be in the Google Meet, but the students at school will not will not necessarily be in the Google Meet. They won't have their computers on because they'll be doing other things. So arrival to school. Two of the times, arrival and dismissal, are things that we've thought a lot about in terms of making sure that we're safe. And we continue to put things in place to ensure the safety of our students. The, the, um, the scaffolded approach to coming back to hybrid, having kindergarten and first grade first, and then second through fourth, is helping us a lot to work through these procedures. And we're, we have kindergarten and first all mapped out already. We've started to do second, third, and, and we'll start fourth tomorrow. But there are a few things that I'm going to share with you tonight that we're doing to make sure that everything is clear. So for kindergarten, we have three kindergarten classrooms that will come, that will arrive and come through door 20. Now, when, when the students come to school, you're going to bring them to school for this first section of the hybrid model. Because as of now, we want to make sure that you've completed your, your uh, screening form. And if you have, your, the child is good to go into the building. And in door 20 and door 15, the children will see the teachers right there inside at their doors. They'll be able to go right in. They'll be told where to, uh, to take a seat and they'll have, they'll do their first round of hand washing in the morning and then getting their supplies ready. So these are the doors that our, our kindergarten and first grade teachers are going, uh, students are going to enter doors 20, doors, door 15 and door nine. For second grade and third grade, we have uh, door nine, door 13, and door five. And there'll be more information for second and fourth grade coming um, as we get closer to their hybrid date. All, for all arrival, all parents, students, and staff must wear masks on school grounds at all times. So even though we're outside, even though we will be using the outdoors for breaks for our students, we expect that when you're coming onto the grounds because you will be passing people and will be moving quickly and we want to get the kids inside everybody needs to wear a mask at that time just as in non-pandemic times the parking lot is for staff only and due to the pandemic the district has closed the playgrounds and the blacktops so we ask that you don't use those before school um, or after school dismissal from school is is similar in the sense that you have to uh, wear masks and keep a six foot distance. That's what we ask for uh, arrival as well. We've done some things to enhance the, the clarity of that for each teacher. So we, we all, first of all, we have one extra door for dismissal. So second grade will have its own door. They will exit out door 10, but three of the classes, the, class, the classes that are on the door nine, door 10 wing will move towards to, to, to that uh, side, they'll move towards door nine. That's where they will meet their parents on the grass. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And the other second grades that are on the door 13 wing will move towards door 13. Third grade is going to come out door 13 and they all have spots along the sidewalk there. So our parents are going to be asked to stand on the grass so that you leave the teachers and the classes plenty of space. There are white circles you will notice around uh, McGinn where the students are going to be able to stand on the sidewalk. In the front of the school, if, if you are on the sidewalk that's all the way by the street, all parents can stand there because that's not where students will be. Um, but in the, on, the, on the path around the building, we're, we're using that space for our teachers so that they can spread out their classes. You can see them easily. Dismissal can be quick and we can maintain the safety of the six, six foot social distance and, um, and a quick and efficient uh, in and out. And fourth grade will continue to use door five. They do, we just don't have third grade there now. So it will be fewer classes and they will also have their own spaces with their own um, circles to stand on. If you want it visual, I have kindergarten and first grade so far. We do have more grades that are almost ready, but I wanted to just make it clear since we're starting on Monday for kindergarten and first grade. You'll notice here in the top left corner, this is our Mrs. DeAndrea's spot. 
and she will be standing there with her class here and families can wait in front. Um, there are spots, there are gonna be spots there, there are spots in the, on the sidewalk there for, for dismissal. This is Miss Cicchini's spot, which is in, right in front of door 20. And this actually families can stand on these white dots because her students will be behind her and to the sides of her. And this is Ms. George's spot. You can see from, this is as if it were from her perspective in front of the kindergarten playground. And this is where her kids will be standing and families can stay on the grass or on the sidewalk by the street. If you come around the path, you'll notice all of these dots. Ms. Toriello will be using this space for her students. So we're going to ask that parents stand on either side it six feet away from her class so that she can spread, she can, she can quickly dismiss to the spread out families. And Ms. First is right here and she would walk around here for her families. Now, first grade, I didn't put all of first grade's um, spots up here, but I just wanted to show you that it was both sides of door nine. So the, down here in the bottom right, you'll see this is Mrs. Testa's spot. She actually is going to um, come around the, from door nine to the right. And over here, you can, you can see that that would be um, the kindergarten playground, one of their playgrounds over there. So her families can stand over here, spread out. Um, Ms. Riff's class is an example of one that's on the opposite side of door nine. If, you, if you're looking at door nine and um, you look to the right, that is where she, she would go around the corner and this is where her students will stand and families can stand on the grass over here to dismiss. Ms. Bradley's is farther down over here and then in the middle of the blacktop um, at door nine is where, um, this is Ms. Ms. Gregory, we've got Ms. Horbath also in on the blacktop and there are spots we made sure not to cover up our beautiful uh, PTA paintings there for of games but we added spots where people can stand there six feet apart as well special area classes so all specials PE art music library and Spanish will take place in the general education classrooms unless the students have access to the specialist classroom in their spang, in their wing and space allows it. So that is, um, so our specialists as of now are traveling. We are going to have some construction in our media center in the coming weeks, just because it's fun to have more, uh, more excitement during this time. Um, so, so our, our specialists will be traveling to the classroom. So they will work in the teacher's workspace and be with your students and then they'll, they'll travel to other classes as opposed to your children moving throughout the building. Um, and, and our hopes again is to, to limit the contact of our, of our classes so that they can, they can be, um, they can be somewhat of a pod. Um, there will be some movement, but we're going to limit it to as much as possible. And if children need to get to, uh, to the classrooms, there will be some travel through the building, but again, we're gonna maintain it on the wing. Specialists have already talked about the ones who have access to, to a classroom to use have already talked to me about potentially having students walk around the building to go to uh, their room if they're not gonna to come to their room directly. Snack in the elementary classroom. So we will be having snack. This this is a long time as we found on the in the virtual time. It's a long time for, for our young learners to go without having something to eat. So snack to the greatest extent possible will take place outdoors on all days that weather permits. When there is really bad weather, a snack may occur in the classrooms. And this was in our notes too. This is something that we initially had not planned on, but from what we've learned um, from dining experiences, that we are okay with 25% of our students eating a snack quickly at their seats um, for short, very short periods of time. So, so teachers will rotate their students having snack. They also will be washing their hands before and after. So that's how that they can build in the rotation, um, but there will still be a snack. So we ask that, um, that you do send in a substantial snack so that they can have, they can feel full, they have their one snack and they're able to make it for the rest of the day. For the most part though, we're gonna work to have our snacks outside. As I mentioned, there is a daily screening, symptom screening questionnaire that you all must complete daily um, as quickly as possible in the morning. We understand that some of you don't get up as early as we're asking you to fill it up right away. I, I think seven o'clock is the goal, 7.30 is when we ask you to complete it by. 
Um, please complete it as soon as you can because we do have staff that are starting at 7.30 to check that and they will be sending reminders to people who have not completed it by that time. If, if students do not have the form, if they're in school, we're gonna do our best to make sure that as you enter the, before you even enter the building, every single person has completed it. But if not, we are going to have to um, have your child wait um, in, in isolation until we have a parent or guardian that can complete it. So what should your child bring to school every day? We are asking our little ones to bring a lot of stuff. And the reason is that we really don't know what's going to happen at the end of the day. Things are going well so far, but as we all know, there are numbers are creeping up and we want, we want to, our students to be ready to have whatever they need um, at home at any time so, and at school. So we are asking our students to bring their device and charger. Um, although we would also ask that you do your best to make sure that the device is fully charged when they come to school. We ask that you bring a water bottle labeled with your child's name. Our water fountains are closed, but the water bottle distributors are open. So we have two of those. So um, students can fill their water bottles, <coughs> excuse me. And although we would like them to come with a full water bottle so that they don't have to get it filled. All students must wear a mask and also bring extra masks in a Ziploc bag labeled with the student's name. Um, your teachers have also requested that you label everything that you sent, that they've asked you to bring. It's so not, maybe not down to the single crayon, but definitely the crayon box so that we can make sure we can keep their stuff safe and just for them, which is counter of course, to what we usually do. We like to share everything, but in this environment, we were safety is number one. So that's what we're focused on. That being said, we, we snack is also a time for, um, for safety. So we wanna make sure that you, they're peanut and tree nut free snacks. And we have the example of the snacks on our website that you, that you can um, send in. We also ask that you provide extra layers of clothing for going outdoors and for cooler classrooms. Another component of Dr. Mast's letter this evening, which was super helpful and it's very accurate because we are already experiencing that in our school with the changing weather. Today has, was really warm, but not every day has been. Um, we have the short term fixes for our ventilation systems have been to open our dampers to our ventilators by, I think it's 40%. I shouldn't give a percentage because I don't know exactly, but I know it was supposed to be um, about that to, to let lots of air through air flow through the classrooms. That combined with having windows open uh, enables the ventilation to sustain the class sizes that we ha we're having in our schools. So it's chilly sometimes. We, we have been pretty lucky so far, but it is, it is going to be chilly for students um, at, at some times and, they, and it would be good for them not only to have a coat, but also to have layer sweatshirts and things in the classroom. And if they go outside for their snacks, we are also, to the extent possible, we are also going to um, do, do uh, gym outside when we can. And the other supplies needed would be any that, that your classroom teacher requests. We know that backpacks will be challenging and heavy. So we will have staff to assist children to, to get them to their classrooms. But we do ask that they do, um, you do your best to pack it for them so that they can bring them themselves. I already mentioned the screening now several times. Uh, if you can't tell, that's something that's really important to ensure the safety of our students and staff and, and of you, of course, when, you're, when your kids come home. Today, you should have received information about a practice screening test. So tomorrow, we are asking that, that this is if you were in kindergarten and first grade. We are going to send the test for second grade through fourth grade um, in a week or so. But the test for kindergarten and first grade is tomorrow. And we ask you to fill it out first thing in the morning. Even You're not coming to school tomorrow. It's just a practice. But this is for everybody. This is for both cohorts. It's just to test to see that the, that the system works. We will um, contact you too to, to, if you haven't completed it. I understand that that uh, virtual learners are not going to need to complete it. So I'm pretty sure that we can, I know that we can actually filter so that you won't get that reminder. But A and B cohorts, we are practicing with you tomorrow morning. So please try to fill that out in the morning. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm going to return to your screen now and take any questions that you may have.
And I'm going to unpresent that so we can see all of us. Look how many of us there are. Hang on one second. Okay. I am trying to stop the, the presentation, but I know you can still see it. All right, let's take a look at the chat. Does anybody have any questions? All right, when will, when will six feet not be possible? How often? Great question. Um, and sibling dismissals, that's another great question. All right, so let me start with um, six feet not being possible. Um, I would say that it really will be possible most of the time. Um, however, if they, you know, sometimes when we're walking in line, kids might come a little bit closer together or, um, you know, it would be, or they might pass another student in the hallway. It will be very quick. It won't be for, for lasting periods of time. We are doing our very best to, um, to maintain six feet of distance at all times. It is possible that a teacher could, if a child wanted to show something to the teacher, the teacher could come closer because both of them are going to be masked. They're going to be, they're not going to be touching one another. Um, they might, a teacher might come over to look at what the child is doing a little bit closer, but that, that would be also very brief. It would not be for a long interval of time and, and everybody would be masked. For the most part, though, we have thing we have everything spaced out six feet. Okay, there will not be temperature screening at school. Can we use the drop off line? <laughs> Good question, Ms. Mitchell. We will eventually use the drop off line. Yes, I am working on plans for that. We are not ready to do that yet, and I would rather not start it before we we have the whole school back. Um, for a lot of reasons, I don't want anybody to get confused about where their kids go are going. I want the children to know where they're going, um, and and I want I want us to have the routines established for the screening and the safety around the building. So we're not going to start with the drop off line, but we will have one eventually. Okay, Mr. Milner, on what days are the classrooms being cleaned? Great question. The classrooms are being cleaned every single day. Any, any classroom that students are in will be cleaned every single day. And they will be, um, they're, they're going to have their touch points cleaned several times a day. We have our staff coming through throughout the days. We're, bathrooms are going to be cleaned more frequently, but your classrooms will be cleaned every day. What is the seating in the kindergarten classrooms? Do students have group tables or individual desks? Great question. And, and I think that your um, classroom teachers too will be sharing pictures with you. In every one of our kindergarten classrooms, they are using tables, a mixture of tables, flexible seating, and there may be one or two desks, but it's kind of like a work area space. So um, we, the kindergarten and first grade teachers too have worked really hard to maintain that sense of um, early childhood expectations and joy, the way that we, the way that we typically plan our, our classrooms. Kids are definitely spread out. They're, they're six or more feet apart, and they, but they are still going to be using learning items that they would normally do in the kindergarten classroom. They're just gonna be designated for them. So kids, uh, teachers are already working on providing individualized areas of learning uh, tools but they may be doing, students will still have the opportunity to share what they're doing with other friends by turning and talking to them across tables, for example, but they will be at a distance. And they might be working on the same thing. So for example, in a, in a kindergarten center time, you might have two tables that are working with blocks. So they're both exploring and they both might share their creativity and how they, how they worked in those blocks. They're technically both in the block center, but they're not working directly with one another, sharing the blocks and building together, which is hard, but it is, um, it's what we're trying because we want kids to still be able to experience what we find important play and thinking and learning through play um, that, we, that we traditionally do in our kindergarten classrooms. 
if our child is sick at all or quarantined, are they automatically able to go back to virtual learning? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, at, at any time. So if you have selected hybrid, there are several things you should know about the virtual learning piece. First of all, if there's a day that, that you can't come to school, but you can, you can come to school virtually, you can still, your child can still be present if your child isn't too sick to be on, on the computer, for example. So, so if, you, if you're a little bit worried about a stomach ache, but you don't think it's, too, you, you don't think it's, it's something to worry about, um, it's going to be short-lived, um, keep your child home. But if you think that your child, if your child wants to join the class from home, that child is not absent. You're still, you're still present. In fact, we now have a whole new category of codes for um, absences or, and, and being present based on whether you're remote or whether you're in the classroom. And you, oh, the other, the other aspect of to that, Ms. Murray, is that if you are, um, or Mr. Murray, if you are uh, in hybrid and you choose to go to virtual learning, you can do that at any time. That's totally up to you. If you choose to, to turn from, from an A or B co cohort to a C, which is all virtual, you are welcome to do that. Um, it, if in the reverse, if you are a virtual learner and you would like to join the hybrid model, that the next entry point for that is December 11th but there will be two more after that as well. And if your child is sick at all or quarantined, the other, the other piece about that, um, it, because the quarantine has, it depends why the child is quarantined, but there, if there's an impact on the class, everybody would know if there's an impact of the school, everyone would know not about who, who it was, but we would, we would uh, spread the communication based on what we learned from our district nurses and uh, the health department. Will the teacher face the in-class students when teaching and still be visible to online students? Great question. So we're working on that. We've actually been, the kindergarten and first grade teachers have actually been practicing that. And we are going to, we have provided, um, you may or may not have received that information yet from your teachers, that we have provided this planning time in the PM during the two to three o'clock hour uh, leading up to hybrid so that they can practice these tools. Is more practice going to be needed? Absolutely. But what's beautiful about the, um, the technology that we have been experimenting with is that they absolutely, the teachers will be visible to both the students at school and at home and the students will be as well. Not all day. It depends on, on what the activity is, is and what, what the students are learning. In some cases, the students will at school will have their Google Meets open. They might not have them in front of them on their desks because they're doing something else, but they'll have them open so that students are all seeing one another in the same Google Meet. There will be different ways of doing that, but the teacher will be visible to both sets of students most of the time. Will the afternoons be used for regular lessons? So the, the afternoons will continue to be used um, in, in a similar fashion to the way they're being used now. We have spoken with, you know, they continue to evolve because they're, they're really there to, to use for students, uh, for, for focusing on students' needs. So teachers who want to meet with um, the students who were in school, because maybe they, maybe they met with small groups of the virtual learners during the day, they might meet with them during, um, during that two to three o'clock time. Likewise, they might meet with all their only virtual learners because the virtual learners might need some very specific instruction based on the fact that they weren't present to see things in the same way that that the in-person learners will doing. So that two to three block enables time for our teachers to think what do our what do our students most need? Who do I need to who do I need to work with now to make sure that they've understood these concepts and that are they're able to share what they know. So that, that will still be a flexible time period, but it will be used for instruction. Will they have chorus music specials? <laughs> yes. So we will have, so chorus, we have not completed um, the schedule for how that will work because initially we said no chorus there. We can't sing in school and we're not, we're, we still are not unfortunately going to be singing in school, which is one of my favorite things to hear our fourth graders singing, singing chorus. But we are going to work on figuring out a way to have chorus be during that two to three o'clock hour. I think we can do it. it that, that's just going to take some schedule shifting. So um, I'm going to I'm going to be working with the specialists on that. They will continue to have music class. However, they're learning about beats. They're doing they're doing the things that uh, Mrs. Flipsky also loves to do besides saying that she can do um, in person with with students. 
Will the heat be on or off when it was cold outside? It will be on, yes. At what temperatures will the building be kept? What temperatures will students not be allowed to go outside for snack? That's a great idea, question I do not know. I mean, we are, we are planning to go outside for snack because it's such a short period of time in very, even very cold weather because we, you, we can, we can uh, wrap up. Um, we think that it's good for children to be outside in cold weather anyway, and, um, and they can eat all bundled up. So um, it's, not, it's not the same as a recess period, which is a full 30 minutes where, where we do have to be very, um, we, we are conscious of the weather. We usually don't go, go outside below 32 degrees. And hopefully we won't have a lot of uh, days like that. We'll have to see. We'll have to see if um, we'll have to see if we can do that for for snack. But I still think that if we are asking kids to wrap up, that they can go outside for snack for a few minutes. I noticed the calendar showed. Oh, you all. That, I'm sorry. That that was also a question about the temperature in the building. Um, that we don't. Ha I don't know what the temperature is that we keep the 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 heat the the temperature that we keep the classrooms on. So I will find out about that. It will definitely be colder though, because even the, the vents running at their highest level with the dampers open, there's gonna be more cold air coming in. So the, temp the classrooms will be colder than they normally are in, uh, in the colder months. The calendar showed hybrid until June. Is that expected or was that just in case it was needed? Yes, that was just in case it was needed. We, the reason why we had to do it for the whole school year is because we wanted to make sure that if we are hybrid, we have provided an equitable number of days for both the A and the B cohorts. Um, this is very significant in the middle and high schools because they run on six day schedules or they have block scheduling depending upon uh, the courses. So they really had to be careful that that everybody had an equal opportunity to to get the, the same um, instruction and that benefited us too. So the, so our our cohort schedule, we have the, the Wednesdays, the alternating Wednesdays that are in person too. So we just made sure that they were equal. Can we at any point return our child to virtual learning? Yes, you can. What happens when regular cold flu season starts and kids start getting typical running noses, coughs, fevers? That is an excellent question. We are going to add definitely a fever, you stay home. And if the child, usually with a fever, a child, it doesn't feel well enough to, uh, to, uh, to learn for the day. And one thing I didn't mention was attendance. If your child is home, if it's a virtual day for your child and your child is sick and is not going to participate on uh, the meets, then you then please call the uh, attendance line and let us know that your child will be absent for the day. Uh, running noses, um, we again, I think that's just one of the symptoms. I think that's a symptom that if, if it's not persistent, if it's a, a, an allergy based uh, uh, runny nose, you're okay to come to school. But if it's something that can that is consistent, if you have a runny nose and a cough, we're going to ask you to stay home. And you and if you go to the doctor and find out that you know you know get get a doctor's note that says your child is healthy and recovering you'll be able to come back to school with that are there enough outlets in the classroom to allow class to plug in chromebooks great question not yet we are working on that uh, we do have we have in addition to the chromebooks that your students have that your children have and the um and the ipads we do have chromebook tubs that have um, charging stations within them. So we're going to be using, using them to help as, as kids start to get low to rotate their Chromebooks through when they're not using them in the classroom. Um, but that it, we are also looking to increase at, by one outlet in some of the classrooms an extra outlet because not every classroom has um, enough outlets for to plug in all of the Chromebooks at once. Did you provide the protocol that is in place? Should a student test positive? No, it wasn't already uh, covered, Ms. Halleck or Mr. Halleck, and, and I appreciate the question. Um, the protocol that's in place is, is uh, posted on our website. If you could take a look at that, only because it's more, it's clearer information than I would share now. The, the main thing is if a student tests positive, you would report it to, um, to our nurse. Um, a student wouldn't test positive at school because we're not we're not doing tests. But if that were found out at home, then you definitely would need to quarantine. We, the and there would be a, a procedure in place for finding out whether 
whether your child is um, demonstrating symptoms or not, because there are different days that you would need to quarantine based on that. And um, I think it, it's after 10 or 14 days, that if you are fever free and you are, sh are showing a no symptoms that you can come back to school, but that, that would be between you and the nurse and the nurses uh, collaborate. We also have a head nurse in the district. We also have a doctor for the district that's working with our district on COVID cases and um, they work directly with the health department. Are there dividers between the students? There are not. That is something that um, our district did not opt to do. So the, um, the students are, are six feet apart and they're seated in their seating positions. In some cases, it's more than that, but they're definitely six feet apart in the classrooms. Um, and, and, but there are no dividers. That, that's, why we, that's why we have to wear masks all day. Do we have the ability to do at-home learning on an in-school day without it being considered an absent? Absolutely, yes you do. Will second grade have tables or, or desks? Second grade, it depends on the classroom. We have some classrooms that have desks and we have some classrooms that have tables. Can you explain more about what students need a device for while in the school buildings in kindergarten? That's a great question. So you, uh, I can't tell you exactly what our kindergarten teachers will be using the devices for in class, but with their use of Seesaw, um, it, now students have a, a lot more flexibility to be able to create with their iPads. They may take a picture of, for example, if it's, center, if it's choice time and they were working on a science project at their table and they wanted to post it to Seesaw, they might take a picture of it and upload it and record themselves. We used iPads in that fashion already before we had Seesaw, we use the iPads that way um, in the classrooms already. And it's, it's a very creative way of using it. I do think that students will be, will be able to see their classmates on the iPads occasionally, but I know our kindergarten teachers as much as possible are trying to present the kids from home on the screen so that the kids in school are gonna be uh, doing most of their work on hands-on at their, at their tables. Will there be workspace barriers between students in the classroom? No, there will not. There, there, again, we have, we have um, we're, we're focusing on six feet distance between the, the spaces where kids are sitting. There may be workspace barriers depending upon the classroom, but in general, the, the students will be, um, will be six feet apart in their desks or their tables, wherever they're sitting. Will students in class use Chromebooks less frequently? Part of why we are sending her is, is to reduce the amount of time on the computer. Yes, I will say it will be less. It will, it will not be non-existent. They will still be doing, you know, depend, it depends on the grade level and um, the concepts that they're learning because some of our, some of our assessments are virtual now. Um, and so kids would be doing those, but to the extent possible, we're gonna have kids turning off their screens at school um, and they and participating in the discussion live with the teacher. So the teacher will be on, will definitely be on the Google Meet. So the teacher will be teaching both to the class and to the the students at home, which um, is is going to po pose challenges. But the students who are in school are going to be able to watch that live and participate live as well. Will the kids be able to play run around with each other when outside? No, I am so sorry to say. They, uh, they will not be able to do that. It, when they go outside for snack, they're going to be um, you know, bringing their towel or their seating space and they're going to be six feet apart outside and, and having their snack. They're not going to be um, playing on somebody else's space. So um, I, di I did have a, a couple pictures. We do have some students here who have, been, who have had managed play spaces outside. That is um, very challenging to do, but it is it is possible. And when teachers take breaks, they might do that. They might have stu students bring their own caddy of something for their for their break time to to uh, work with outside. But that's not likely. It's more likely going to be uh, a relaxing, having your snack, maybe chat with somebody on the next towel. But they're going to be six feet apart for that, and they're not going to be running around. That um, that that's going to be for when they go to. Uh, their lunch and recess after the morning session. And will kindergarten be able to play on the playground? We are kind of still waiting on that. Um, we, we would like that to take place. We would like to have to be able to use the playground. And our assistant superintendent has been exploring 
um, sprays that some districts use that have like a 90 day disinfectant ability. So um, in which case, if we, if we could get that, we would p potentially have one class per day use a play set, for example, for their, for their outdoor time or the um, minimally we've talked about there being uh, 30, 30 to 45 minutes in between groups that are outside. Kids would have to wear their masks on the play sets. They'd have to stay six feet apart on the play sets, which would be tough to manage. So, so it's possible that we'll move towards having the play sets used one, uh, one group per day, but we, we are not there yet. Can you respond to the daily screening through the PowerSchool app? Uh, the, you can, that's a great question. Uh, Mr. Mr. Martinez, but that you have to um, do it. You can you have to get to it via your your browser. So you can do it on your phone. You can't use the PowerSchool app. Basically, is the answer to your question. You have to go through a Chrome browser or something to PowerSchool in order to to respond to the daily screening. So you can do it on your phone, but it's a little bit a uh, little a few extra steps. Will siblings be able to exit through the same door? Unless their classrooms are in the same spot, they will not be able to do that. So families will be picking up. If you have to pick up the two doors that are far away, we do apologize for that. But that's that's how we are going to start the process. And we'll see how that goes. We do have the spots for kids to wait on, which will help us. And for students, if if you are late, as in, as in you don't make it by 1250, for example, to pick up your kids. 1240 is our dismissal time. That is a change that's starting on Monday. Um, 1240 will be our dismissal time. So that's when the kids will be out there. If you're there at 1240, you will be able to get your siblings no problem, regardless of what, what exit they come out of. Um, if you are late, the, the um, students will be brought to our multi-purpose room. And in our multi-purpose room, we have, you know, normally they would be brought to the main office, but they would be too close there. So in the multi-purpose room, we have squares on the floor for kids to sit on um, that are six feet apart while they're waiting for it to be picked up. How soon can the kids return to school after being fever free? Great question, uh, Ms. Moda, that I'm gonna ask you to, um, to ask the nurse I'll, because I'm not 100% sure about that. I think it is, it's partially dependent on why, why and how the child had a fever, but it's, um, I think it's 24 hours, but it may be 48 in some cases. So I'd like you to talk to the nurse about that. If children are receiving therapies, are they being pulled out through the morning and grouped with children from their own class or are they mixed with children from other classes, grades, and then coming back to the classroom? Or are there any other circumstances when students would be mixing with children from other classes? Yes, there are, there are situations where certain students would have therapies with other kids. We don't have large groups of, of um, students in that situation. And it, like those, those groups themselves for related services are very small, but yes, they could be, they could have services with students from other classes. Um, the same is true for our special education classes. So the, to the extent possible, we are keeping the pull-out resource classes on the same wing as, as, their, um, as the rest of their classes. So that's the way we're trying to limit the movement of students because it's, it's not possible to do it 100% across, um, you know, to keep them, keep them limited to their classroom but we are doing our best to limit it to a wing. Again, there are, there are some exceptions to that that we can't avoid, which related services is one of them. So, so um, a student from one class might, might travel to, it, they would go to the related services professionals room, but they would be in a small group with that, with, uh, of, of students there. And then they do go back to their classes. So a, recommend, a recommended way to label the Chromebooks so that if they are put in the chargers, they come home with the same Chromebook. That's a, um, they will definitely come back with the same Chromebook because we have, we actually have a record of all of the Chromebooks that you have. We have a spreadsheet with everybody's, um, we scanned all of the, the Chromebooks and the um, iPads. So we know which one your child has. Um, in terms of the same, they might not come home with the same charger, but as long as the charger works, that's not a problem. Um, the, it's the, it's the, um, the Chromebook itself that, that matters. And we do have them all assigned to specific students. Where can we add authorized pickups for students? Ooh, great question. Where can we add authorized pickups for students? You can, if you, if you um, email our main office tomorrow, they can tell you whether you need to submit a form for that because they might just be able to update it for you in PowerSchool. 
Um, but, but please send an email to either Ms. Jubilus or uh, Mrs. Gleason tomorrow. Good question. Will we know how many students in each class max and how is it looking with the responses thus far? Will we be able to know the numbers prior to the start of at-home learning in each specific class in person, not at home? Um, that is a good question. You definitely will know because your, your children will be in there, but prior to the start, I'm not sure if you'll be able to know. There's some things that, that are still changing, so I'm not sure if you will know prior to the start. If you have a specific question or concern, um, I can tell you right now that the, that the cohorts, it depends on the grade level. It depends on the grade level, but I think our max cohort of students is like 13 or 14. And but most of them are under 10. Most of them are 10 or fewer. I understand the full policy is on the website, but I didn't see the answer to whether the full class would need to quarantine if a child in the class test positive or just the one cohort. Great question. That completely depends on the situation. So um, we, for example, we have, um, we have an example of a staff member who had COVID and there was no exposure to anybody at school. Same mask now. So there um, no to have any quarantine. needed to quarantine. Um, so it and the same is true for students. It completely new depends. mask for school. Cool, right? Brooks, I'm sorry if you could mute. Mask. That would be great. And I don't camouflage into the. I'm not sure who that is. The trees and no one would see you with a mask. Can older siblings pick up at dismissal? If you oh, if you let God. us know about that, that's not an issue. We watched two already. Oh, my God. Are there any? Oh, that's not pretty beautiful. Should make her my other phone. Child would be picked up right to buy aftercare. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I said if we stopped. Let's see. If we stop this because you were scared, we can put on the uh, instead. Is what to, I said. To mute one person, but I can't. I can't believe it. Um, I'm calling them now so they can mute. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I couldn't even see who it was because there's so many people on the screen. This is so cool. Uh, let's see. If Are there any special arrangements we should make if our child will be picked up by the Y for aftercare? No, we have the, we have the Y pickup and the JCC pickup all uh, accounted for in our building. So we're all set. There, 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 most of it is going to be outside the waiting, but there, we also have a space in, um, inside if needed. Would you allow a third, fourth grader to be dismissed without a parent so they could run to another door? Yes, we allow that. So that is another, I mean, our, we've always allowed our third and fourth graders if parents give permission to walk around to the building to, to meet their siblings. That's absolutely uh, fine with us. Will the kids still be able to visit the nurse if they need to during the day, like needing an inhaler, et cetera? Yes. So our nurse is is going to uh, work with the teachers to try to the to the extent possible to come down to the classrooms to treat the student outside the uh, the classroom. So if a child is seeming to be sick, for example, in in terms of the inhaler, um, that yes, the child will most likely come to the uh, to the office for that. The items you mentioned that the kids have to bring, like a towel or a mat, the extra mask, is it something they have to bring every day or does it stay in their cubby? If they have, it, again, it depends on the class and the grade level for kindergarten and first grade, um, a towel or a mat may be able to stay, but, um, and the extra masks, they may be able to stay. It depends on the way that the teacher has the classroom organized in terms of storing materials, because the goal is for each each day for the next, I mean, for the next cohort to come in to not have um, to not have their space taken up. So, so that's a good question, but that's going to have to wait to depend on the teachers. I see what you're saying. You're talking about items where if we did have to go virtual automatically, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you didn't have them back. Um, that it's it's a good question to think about, and I can I can address it with my staff, and we'll talk about it. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for the information. I'm sorry I didn't get to hear your answer to my question. Okay, Mr. Ms. Jimenez, can older si siblings pick up and at dismissal? Yes, yes, they can. That is fine as long as they adhere to the same uh, safety precautions of wearing a mask and staying six feet apart. Then they are welcome to do that as well. 
I think I have gotten all of the questions in the chat. Does anybody have any other questions? Oh, can third graders walk home or do they need to be met by a parent? If you are comfortable with your third grader walking home, we've had third graders walk home before. If, if, you're, if your third grader is comfortable with it and you're comfortable with it, that is definitely your choice. Hopefully last question oh, uh, for you. So we fill out the questionnaire. Let me, I'm sorry, Ms. Maloney, let me check. It's not open for me. Um, every day on power school. Oh, great question. Thank you for asking that. So you are always going to fill out the, the, the screening questionnaire on power school. And thank you, Ms. Weinstein. You're always going to fill out the, um, the information, the screening on power school. You do not need to fill it out if you're not coming to school. So if it, for tomorrow, I'm asking all A and B, uh, first and second grade families to fill it out so we can test it for next week but second third and fourth grade families you don't have to test it tonight we're going to test you next week and um and in general on a on an actual school day you have to fill it out if it's your cohort day so um if you are an a cohort next week you're going to need to fill it out monday tuesday and wednesday because you have the first three days of the school week and if you are Cohort B, you're going to have to fill it out on Thursday and Friday of next week. And if it helps to get reminders, I'm happy to send out a reminder too through PowerSchool. Any other questions? Where on the site is it? So, um, okay, I'm sorry, I missed I missed uh, the missed the Clark's question. Sorry. Are students allowed to bring backpacks? Yes, please, with their with their supplies or drawstring bags. If those if drawstring bags are easier for them to carry their material, they have a lot of materials to carry, so they can. They definitely should be bringing backpacks with their things in it. Where on the site is it? So the this uh, the screening information. If you go on the McGinn webpage, you'll on the main page and you scroll down, you're going to see the McGinn family letter hybrid version. That is the, or the hybrid letter, that is the one that has all the information in it. Within it, you'll find the hybrid calendar and you'll also find the instructions for the screening in there. They went out from, um, from the IT department. Missed the first part of the meeting. Yes, the, the, this has all been recorded. It's still being recorded. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. and Ms. Horseman. Thank you, everybody. Aw. Thank you all. I mean, I can't, I can't thank you enough for everything that you've done so far. I, I really am inspired by you in, in helping us have a terrific opening virtually, and it's enabling us to continue, continue it. What is the earliest? Sorry, I saw the question from the Nogus. Hang on one second. It just popped off. What is the earliest that you should fill out the form in the morning? 12.01 a.m. is the earliest. Between 12.01 a.m. and 7.30 is the time that we ask that you fill it out. You're welcome, Mr. and Ms. Edmonds. Thank you so much. You rock too. Thank you. And if you want to opt out of hybrid, you can do that at any time. Will kids be gathering? They will not be gathering, but we will, uh, we will do our best to maintain the, the warm environment that our classroom teachers have started with them this year. It is really special to see. They have a connection, even though it's been virtual, which is great. So we know that virtual learning works. Thank you. You can unmute too when you go. You don't have to just write it. <laughs> this is really cool to see so many people. Thank you all so much. It's really been a pleasure. We say bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Slover. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Slover. Thank you very much. And thank you for your great questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you Dr. Slover. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. 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 So nice to hear your voices. Bye. 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 Bye.